So make a little subheading under this. The key idea I want to get across to you is, how do we convert between bases? There's, um, there's lots more to think about under this heading of number bases. It's a huge topic. <coughs> Excuse me. But for now, let's just try and get a handle on, well, how do you, how do you work with these things? Okay. So to indicate that a number is in a base, right? what you do is you write that number, like say 47, and you write its base as a little subscript after it. So if I'm writing this as decimal, you could either write it as 47 with a dec, which means decimal, or you could write it as 47 with a little 10, which means base 10. Okay? So I would like to convert this number into some other base. Okay? So I'm going to convert it into binary shortly just to show you how inefficient a method it is. But for reasons that will become clear shortly, um, that's not a good first example to do. So here's the example we're all going to try together, e.g. Convert 47 in base 10 to base 3. Now, you've seen just here that a lot of the bases have names. So base 10 is decimal, base 2 is binary, base 16 is hexadecimal. Base 3 also has a name. It's called ternary. It's very uncommon, uh, but you can do some cool card tricks with it. And uh, if we have time, I'll show you one, but we'll see how we go. How do we convert it? Let me show you how. Um, I'm going to do all of the working I'm about to do, I'm going to do it in decimal. So rather than write 4710 and then all these numbers with tens after them, I'm just going to write this heading decimal and then everything you're about to see is decimal. When I change it, I will indicate that I'm doing so. Okay? We don't normally have to say that because we usually do everything in decimal, but we're about to change that. So that's why I'm stating it explicitly. And if you're doing working that you know, um, converts between different number systems, then you need to say that. Here's what I want to do. Here's the key question. You might even like to jot this down. Think of powers of 3. We're in base 3, so you need to think in terms of powers of 3. Here's why. What does 47 mean? We, we use a place value system, right? The 4 and the 7 have different values, not just because they're different digits, but because they're in different places. So this 7 means 7 lots of 1. What does the 4 actually mean? It doesn't mean 4. It means 4 lots of 10, right? Because, of course, it's base 10. If I put a number out the front here, like, say, 2, that 2 doesn't mean 2. What does that mean? Yeah, we would say, oh, you're in the hundreds column now, right? The base of 10 is what forms all of these numbers. Do you see that? Right? So this is really ooh, 2 lots of 10 squared. This is really 4 lots of 10 to the 1. And this is really 7 lots of 10 to the... And if I had decimal points, you seem to like point 0.1, right? What does that 1 mean? That 1 means 1 lot of 10 to the... Ah, okay, so this is why it, it, it makes sense. It's completely internally consistent, right? So if we're in base 3, it's not about these powers of 10 anymore. It's about powers of 3. So tell me, 47, what's the biggest power of 3 you can think of that fits inside 47? 27 seems like the biggest one, right? Which is 3 cubed. I'm going to write 27. That's the biggest power of 3 I can fit in there, but there's other numbers as well. There's 20 left over. Okay, so I'm doing this working to try and work out how many powers of 3 I can fit in. What's the biggest power of 3 you can fit into 20? It's 9. Well, that's the next power of 3, isn't it? But you can't just fit one 9. How many 9s can you fit in there? You can fit two of them. Two lots of 9. Two lots of 9 is 18. So what's left over at the end? Two. It's not a trick question. What's the biggest power of 3? you can fit into 2. I, I guess you mean 3 to the power of 0, which is 1, right? The units, the units are always the last one, okay? So what I've got here is 27 plus 2 of these plus 2 of these. Do you agree? And I have the whole number now, right? 
So see this line here? What I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it in this form. Mm -hmm. To make clear what powers of 3 actually appear in there, right? You've got one lot of 3 cubed. You've got two lots of 3 squared. How many lots of 3 to the 1 do you have? Hmm. I don't have any of those. Keep that in mind. And then I've got two lots of 3 to the 0. Is that OK? That's what 47 is. So therefore, I'm now going to work within different number systems. So I'm going to stop saying decimal at the front. I'm going to say 47 base 10. It's equal to. Now, look at this part carefully. Look at these guys. Do you remember how we said in base 10, you've got 10 digits to choose from, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., up to 9. And in base 2, we said you've got two digits to choose from, uh, 0 or 1. How many digits do we have to choose from in base 3? 3. What are the digits? 0, 1, and 2. And that's why you only get zeros and 1s and 2s. The biggest number you've got is a 1. Then you get a 2. I've got three cubes, I've got three squares. How many three to the ones did I have again? I don't have any. You said zero. And then how many of the units do I have? Two. That is 47 in base three. Okay.